product and segment elimination decision problem two. Fruit Pie Inc. has three product lines, strawberry, cherry, and apple. The following information is available. Sales revenue for strawberry, $80,000. Sales revenue for cherry, $60,000. Sales revenue for apple, $31,000. Variable cost for strawberry, $20,000. Variable cost for cherry, $5,000. Variable cost for apple, $12,000. Contribution margin for strawberry, $60,000. Contribution margin for cherry $55,000. Contribution margin for apple $19,000. Fixed cost for strawberry $15,000. Fixed cost for cherry $10,000. Fixed cost for apple $25,000. Operating income for strawberry is $45,000. Operating income for cherry is $45,000. And operating loss for apple is $6,000. The company is deciding whether to drop the apple product line. Assuming fixed costs are unavoidable, if Fruit Pie Inc drops product line Apple and rents the space formerly used to produce Apple for $20,000 per year, total operating income will be how much? So this question, we're just focusing on dropping a product line, dropping product line Apple, and it's asking, what is the total operating income if we drop that Apple line? Now, elimination of segments or products, it's all about just pay, paying attention to the wording. We're told that the company's deciding whether to drop the Apple product line. And when you look at the different product lines, strawberry, cherry, apple pie, you notice that Apple has a loss of $6,000. So of course, managers come in, they see $6,000 loss, apple pie. Let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it. Not necessarily. It depends on how things, how things change and what, and what happens. This question is just asking us for the total operating income if we do drop it. It's not asking us to compare and contrast. You could be asked about that as well. And maybe we'll look at that in the end as well. So the company is deciding, again, dropping the Apple product line. Assuming fixed costs are unavoidable, so keep that in mind, if Fruit Pie Inc. drops product line Apple and rents the space formerly used to produce product Apple for $20,000 per year, so that's important as well, total operating income will be how much? We're not given totals. We're not given totals. There's a few different ways. You could go ahead and total these numbers and do some calculations that way. I think the best thing to do is just kind of reconstruct this with of course, everything in strawberry, everything in cherry will be the same, and then go through with apple and determine those amounts, those amounts. So we're gonna take the operating income from strawberry and cherry because those numbers will stay intact. Those two numbers are gonna be exactly the same regardless what happens with apple. These numbers we know are gonna be 45,000 and cherry, 45,000 for both numbers. So strawberry, cherry, Operating income is going to be $45,000. We can start there. Start there by putting those two numbers. The question's asking for the total operating income with elimination of Apple. So let's take into account that first. $45,000, $45,000. That gives us a total of $90,000. $90,000 right there. Now that's before taking into account. We also have to consider the fixed costs of Apple still have to be subtracted away because they are unavoidable. So we're going to subtract away the fixed cost of Apple. Now you're saying, well, why aren't we subtracting away the fixed cost for strawberry and cherry? We did when we put in the 45,000 because they were taken into account in the 45,000 for both numbers. So we subtract away the fixed cost for Apple. We subtract away $25,000. Subtract away $25,000. Now, is there anything else we need to do? Is that it? Just subtract away fixed cost of Apple and we're done? No. We're told that if we drop, if we drop Apple, we are going to get $20,000 per year in rent. So we're going to increase for the opportunity costs of renting Apple space, which is $20,000. So we're going to increase for that. And then we get our operating income amount, which is going to be $85,000. $85,000. That is our answer. The answer to total operating income will be $85,000 by dropping Apple and taking into account the $20,000 and again, the unavoidable fixed costs. I'm gonna take it a step further. Again, that's the answer. But what if you were asked about the change? Well, if we look at the before situation, the total operating income, the operating income, let me put a line here, put a line. So the operating income before is just totaling up the numbers, the operating income and operating loss, and the operating income before getting rid of Apple is 84,000. So 84,000 
versus 85,000. Of course, 85,000 is better than 84,000 because again, think of this like profit. Some of you are wondering, well, well, how exactly is that? Because the fixed costs and the opportunity costs, the fixed costs are more than the opportunity costs. And you're right to think of it like that. But here's why. Look at the contribution margin that Apple was producing and then look at the fixed costs. There was a $6,000 difference. So $6,000 there versus $5,000 here. So that is where that $1,000 difference between 84,000 and 85,000 comes into play. The contribution margin of 19,000 just was not covering that fixed cost for Apple by 6,000 and renting it, we get $20,000 rather than 19. So another way to look at this is, hey, we get contribution margin to, to cover fixed costs of 25,000 of $19,000 or we can get rent of $20,000. So even if I asked you looking at this situation, what, what's gonna happen? You should be able to see that and say, okay, well the contribution margin is actually higher when you rent because you're getting that $20,000 because the variable costs are gonna, are gonna go away. Yeah, we still have the unavoidable cost of 25,000, but 20,000 is higher than 19,000. So just looking at that number alone, that 20,000 versus the contribution margin of 19,000, you can see that by getting rid of Apple, it's gonna be better. By that, well, you don't, you might not know how much by, but you at least see it's gonna be a better situation. And that's exactly right, because again, the fixed costs are unavoidable. So that just shows you the use of um, contribution margin in these types of decisions. I know we've done contribution margin a lot in these managerial problems. It shows you how, how relevant it is. I know it's used in a lot of calculations, but also you can use as a measure just to see, okay, well, how much is going towards our fixed costs to cover that?